Hello everyone again, Liz Soria here with ETBS, your tax advisor, your business coach. And yes, this time we're gonna talk about actually real estate, which is my other other dear uh, niche to my heart. Um, uh, I think that uh, real estate is one of those, what has made a lot of people very wealthy. Um, and I'm really excited to see that, um, you know, we, we're in a good time. We really are. Um, I, I really believe that we can do so much um, with just the right investment. Um, so if you're planning to still get into it and you're thinking, hey, uh, Liz, um, is this still a good time to do so? Um, we're almost at the... I was at the end of the first quarter of 2018. I still see a very strong market. Um, that is from my opinion. Um, and I think that beyond that, excuse me, beyond that, I think that for some of you who already, uh, what I call, uh, uh, you know, experience into the field, um, it's definitely time to continue investing. Um, I think it's a hot market, uh, especially for, for uh, some of you who are uh, hopefully already at the end of the trend of uh, flipping properties, fixing them, or perhaps it's becoming a landlord. Boy, it is a hot, hot market for landlords right now. It's, it's incredible. I, I kind of have to think back uh, during the times of, uh, uh, you know, I would say roughly around 2003, uh, when I originally did my first investment. And I remember it was a very simple, you know, uh, uh, small condo. And uh, uh, I, I, I felt that I was making such a huge decision in my life um, that um, I remember being so nervous about <laughs> signing the top line <laughs> because uh, I was getting myself into, uh, you know, a, a home mortgage. Uh, and being the first time, well, hopefully you still remember how, how it felt. Um, but I, I really have believed that real estate has been one of those incredible, um, good, profitable, uh, you know, uh, investments that anyone can make, uh, as you probably are aware, um, a lot of very rich people uh, have become uh, extremely wealthy uh, in the real estate business. Um, and in one of my other videos, I'm probably going to be discussing a little bit about stock market. Yes, I do believe in the stock market. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so incredible to see how uh, sometimes when we see the real estate increasing the way it has um, in the last, especially uh, almost, I would say two years, it, it's been a hot, hot trend, two, three years now uh, that, um, you know, everybody questions themselves, well, okay, uh, uh, are we going through a um, another real estate burst, right? Um, some of you might, who have been around, uh, understand that there's always going to be risk involved. Uh, but I wanted to, to do this today because this video is really about still the time. Yes, it is. I, I really believe so. Um, and, and I just came across a very good article um, and I want to give the credit to uh, Realtor.com, obviously a very well um, diversified website with a lot of valuable information. And one of the things that I, as I'm reading here and, 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 and recording this, um, it's actually uh, it's showing here how the listing price has also increased 10% compared since February of 2017. So again, listing prices also increased 10% compared to February last year. So the price itself, just a year ago, was 10% cheaper. Um, so offer and demand, right? And that's great when you have properties and you can sell or you're being a landlord. Um, because another thing that we have noticed is that, you know, the, the, obviously the interest has been increasing, so it's become a little more costly for people to invest, okay? Um, in the last, I would say probably 18 months, uh, we have had like four or five different hikes increases of interest. So that does hurt a little bit the bottom line because people who were hoping to buy, uh, you know, uh, in a higher end of price, uh, they're going to deal with more expense of interest, right? Uh, but I still think this is such a great opportunity that that's why I wanted to take the time, um, again, because out of the few niches that I do have and I serve, it's one of them is the real estate. And um, 
I, I, I love the fact that it, it's such a tangible, uh, something that you can touch, something that you can repair, something that you can fix. And, uh, and as I say, all those little ugly houses out there, uh, they can be such a potential um, for you to, to, to uh, increase your wealth. And I think this is the time where a lot of people, I mean, they're not only, uh, you know, uh, buying, but they're actually selling. I think it's, it's I, I personally right now, based on what I'm seeing, uh, even from my home state in Florida, uh, which some of you are probably aware, we got hit very, very hard with one of the states, same as possibly, um, I was in Arizona, right? Um, that we got really hit hard. Uh, Texas was another one. Um, and there's certain states where we suffer a lot, uh, but a lot of people have made a lot of money too. Um, so it's like anything else, right? Pros and cons. Um, so looking through this article, what's interesting about it is that what I'm looking at is how the burst of new constructions and new listing putting larger than expected dent on the inventory. So while few markets are seeing inventory get worse this month, many others have seen listing shortage intensify even further. And that is true. I can tell you as I'm looking around, uh, again, through the South Florida area where I'm still located, I can tell you that, uh, goodness, uh, everywhere, uh, just a few blocks away from where I'm situated, uh, I'm seeing a new development, which I didn't see for a few years happening. Uh, you know, establishing uh, new uh, buildings. And guess what? These are not condominiums. No, they're actually, uh, you know, we, we're looking at uh, what's called a, 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 a rental building, a lease. Um, so this is like one of the big trends. I mean, I've seen the rents increase here. Um, I would say in the past two years, any average from, I would say, mm, easily uh, for a two bedroom, uh, an average of two, three hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for an average person uh, who, unfortunately, we know that their salaries don't go up accordingly with, uh, you know, uh, the, the rents. And, and, and that's one of the issues that we definitely, especially here in Florida, that we have is that people really don't make that much. Uh, you know, it is a reality who's making here is the companies. Um, so, um, the fact is that you know people are really suffering because uh, these are you know increasing the rents are increasing. Um, the downside with that is, which is phenomenal for for us as landlords and for many of you who are into uh, being landlords, because some of you are more um, inclined to just being flippers. I have those kind of customers, you know, where they just buy a property and within six months to a year. They, they rehab it, they fix it, they flip it, and it's gone, right? They make what I call the quick buck. Um, and they do it very well, by the way. <laughs> so, and then we have other type of customers who are more interested in poly and uh, multifamily, which is, I, I think that, uh, you know, if I were to start from, from, from scratch now in these days, I think that is a phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, property uh, investment. Uh, because it's true, with a multifamily, even if it's a small building, let's say, you know, roughly we're looking at 10 units in the building. Uh, even if you have a 10, 20% of vacancy, who cares? Uh, you still have the rest of the units rented, and you're still generating uh, revenue. And as we know, if, if the unit's empty, well, it's not really empty to your pocket, is it? Uh, because you get to write off, uh, uh, you know, being empty, the, the, the unit's being vacant. So that is a write-off. So as we know, there's so many huge benefits of uh, real estate, and that's something that I'm going to probably start creating a separate series just for the for, for people who are in, into the real estate industry because uh, with Trump, uh, there's been a lot of huge changes too, right? So it depends. I mean, um, if you're a realtor or uh, it's called a broker, um, then some things have really changed for that side of the business. Now, if you're a landlord, pretty much the same almost stay, uh, not much of major changes, but it's important that you understand and that especially you hire, you know, a, a tax accountant that, that does understand very well your niche. Um, because again, not all accountants were made equally, right? And, and that's why I always tell people that, you know, when, when we try to deal with hiring the right team in our side and outsourcing, 
you know, make sure that you have people that understand you in the stream. Why I say this? Because that's like almost like seeing a doctor, a specialist, right? I make this comparable sometimes when I speak to my prospect clients. Uh, so, for example, if I, you know, if I, I if, if I have a heart problem, uh, I'm not going to go and just make an appointment with a primary physician, right? That wouldn't make any sense. But I know that already in my mind, my logical mind tells me, hey, you need to see a, you know, a car cardiologist, right? A cardiologist, because if you don't, then uh, that's, the ones that specialize, that's the one that study for that. That's the one that has the experience in that. Um, so the same thing is when it comes to accounting and taxes. You want to be with, you know, company and firm that understands your industry and who's been there. Um, and one of the nice things about me and my team is that we constantly learn it because nothing static, as I always have said in other videos. We keep changing and things keep changing and we need to go along with the changes. So that's what we hear. Um, but one of the, I, I just, this article really caught my eye because I'm looking at these things and it's incredible. I mean, right here, look at this one. It says, with buyers scrambling to get their hands on these homes, the properties are moving off the market 8% faster than this time last year. Spending a media of 83 days only on the market. So you pretty much putting up your property for sale and within less than 83 days, it's sold. I mean, I remember the time, like I said, not even three years ago. I mean, we're not talking about a long time ago. We're not talking about 10 years, 15 years, no, no, not at all. We're talking about recent times um, where, you know, you put a, a property up for sale and you were lucky if you sold in six months, <laughs> you know, or nine months. And mostly when you did, it's because you had to drop your price. So imagine that. Um, so this is a very, very good article. I think that obviously we have certain states that they're always going to sustain and retain, uh, you know, better value such as San Francisco. I don't know. I have had the opportunity to actually visit San Francisco. I think it's a very lovely city. Uh, personally, I like California. I think it's a wonderful state. Um, not sure if I would move there. <laughs> so I would say, Never say never, right? Um, but uh, I can definitely tell you that California would be one of those where it's always going to sustain value no matter what happens. Um, in San Francisco, it's one of the most expensive cities. Um, I was stumped, uh, you know, just not too long when I was there, that, you know, a, a simple one-bedroom, you know, uh, uh, apartment, it, it's an average of, you know, you're looking at uh, $1,200, $1,300. Um, and, and that's in, in, in not, not, not close to the city. Uh, people want to live right in the city, um, especially if you work in the hospitality industry. Uh, you're looking at the $2,000, uh, you know. Um, so still, at least here in Florida, to, to rent a $2,000 unit, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's going to be a nice view. At least you're going to get a nice view. That I can promise. Uh, so, and then we have here with San Francisco, you know, being the top. And then we have Midland, Texas, uh, you know, it's jumping to number five. I was really surprised about that uh, because, again, Texas um, – was the state that got really, really, really hit hard along with Florida um, during, um, you know, the, the burst of, of the real estate. So it is the time, folks. Look at this. This is the ranking right here. This is really interesting. San Francisco still being number one. Uh, Midland, Texas uh, being two. Vallejo, California. As you can see, had San Jose, California. Sacramento, California. Denver has done very well. Santa Rosa, California is doing phenomenal. Um, San Diego, uh, as you can see, all these in within the state of Texas, pretty much, uh, with the exception of Colorado, Endeavor, and Colorado Spring, right? Um, here it is, Dallas, look at this, they're in the rank of number 12. Um, again, Chico, California. Um, I mean, we look at this, I, I mean, Columbus, Ohio is in number 16 already. Um, so, as you can see, it's, it's, it's a blend of California, Colorado, in Texas, pretty surprising, right? Um, and not so much, uh, you know, here, uh, as you can see, Dallas, Texas, but I mean, look at this. Uh, you got Midland, Texas, but yet I don't see Houston as been one of the top rank, which I'm surprised. Um, so again, a lot of changes going on. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, again, this is the time, folks, I mean, time to invest. And like I always diversify, diversify. I always tell this. 
put a little money into you know real estate um if you're into that side of uh you know uh what i call um you know buying hope uh in in hope and that's your strategy then great that's how it is um but definitely you always want to have at least minimal one property if you can afford to have two or three properties, like I always say, instead of just buying a single condo, and trust me when I tell you this because I've been there and done it, uh, you know, it's better off to buy yourself a duplex. Really, get yourself a duplex. Live in one side, in the other side, go ahead and, and rent it out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, then at least you can have, you know, uh, if it's not a duplex, then at least get yourself, you know, a, a, a two house, a, what they call two, two houses in, in a lot of, uh, you know, one single lot. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, uh, and I think that what matters is that you start making those investments, okay? And don't be afraid of coming out of your, your comfort zone of the area that you live in. Sometimes the best house is not in your backyard. It could be somewhere else. So, again, this is a hot market. Still time to buy. I think there's still time to make money. As it is, I see a real estate uh, trend. This is for only this year, 2018. I see it going on probably to 2020. So it's a great opportunity. Again, we're here for you. You need help, you need assistance. Uh, please contact us. Uh, again, my name is Liz Sorry here with etbsfl.com. And uh, like I said, reach out, share, comment, and give us your feedback because all of that really, really does help a lot. And, um, and, and, you know, we appreciate your time because we know you can watch many other things out there or listen uh, in your spare time, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much, and until next time, folks. Bye-bye. This is Liz Soria.